Because as a believer, so that's why you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not deny except as Muslims and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so believer says so you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he should be here. And say the righteous word of La ilaha illallah and if you do that with its right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fix you, he will accept it from you and whoever uh, whomever obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger is distant to the greatest manifest reward in Jannah. I'm about Brothers and sisters in Islam, in Azraq al Hadith, in the Allah, and the Khaira, and Hadi Hadi Muhammad, and in the Shara, and the Muhammad, and the Kulla 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 Brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, has been a tough time for the Muslims everywhere uh, since the start of the, uh, the war, if you, if you will, between the, uh, Israel, the Israelis and the Palestinians. And the scenes of bloodshed is just very, very disheartening and very, very depressing and cause nothing but uh, feeling of grief and sorrow and feeling ashamed of what's being happening as a human and as a Muslim and let alone as a true believer. It is the media which keep like bringing the scenes of the bloodshed to justify what is wrong to be right to exchange or to put the, the falsehood to look like the righteousness and to like kind of muffle, hide the truth and present the, uh, the, um, the uh, falsehood and present the lies. Brothers and sisters in Islam, it is very difficult to see the scenes of bloodshed for any child. And it is particularly difficult to see the bloodshed of the Muslims and those who are like the Mustafaqin. They are like empowered. They, they are like under the power of people who doesn't fear Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and do not believe truly in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It is so disheartening and just bring bad like feeling and bad uh, like. Like words that I was talking to my dear brother and friend uh, Sheikh Karim Abu Zid this morning and asking, well, where are you gonna give the khutbah on Juma today? He replied, he said, I'm gonna start with the words of Ibn Athir. Ibn Athir is one of those historians who wrote the history of Islam. And he started one of his book with saying, Ya layta ummi lam talibni. Ya laytani lam. He said, I wish my mother wouldn't have never given birth to me. And I wish that I have been nothing, nothing. Or I have been, I, I am like forgotten and nobody knows anything about me. He said that after the Mongolians came on the Muslim land and they killed Millions of Muslims to the point that the Euphrates River was full of blood that it was all red. The books of Muslims and the Islamic history books were all like thrown in the river or they were ignited on fire. And in the middle of that, that's Sheikh Karim who's uh, like giving me the uh, information. In the middle of that, the, the news goes to Damascus to people who are Muslim under Muslim Khilafat. And they kind of got angry, they went in the street, they demonstrate, we're gonna kill our enemy, we're gonna have to do this and this, we're gonna fight, we're gonna do. The same scenes that, that you see in the capitals of the whole world. Muslims, millions of Muslims coming out in the streets and display anger. We're gonna do this and that. And what's happening there this morning? Everyone is taking his cow to milk it and going to his work. Nothing. Nothing. Is it, this is what's going on. Rage everywhere. And then in the evening, everybody is at the dining table enjoying his time. Brother and sister, Islam, I'm not blaming anybody or not like kind of uh, uh, like kind of getting. Uh, this across in order to make us feel bad. Yeah, I participate. I, I, I'm one of the, I'm one of you. I'm one of them. We all get angry when we see these scenes. 
But is it what, what the Prophet and the companion would have done if this happened to Muslims somewhere? I'm just asking a question. When I feel bad, and when everyone feels bad, he goes to read the Quran. And when you read the Quran, all the depression, all the pain, all the feeling down, and all the sorrow disappears from just a couple of verses. A couple of verses. You read Surah Al-Isra, and you say, "Audhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, wa laqad atayna Musa al-kitab, wa jaalnahu hudan li bani Israel." Subhana al-ladhi asra ba'di layla min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa al-ladhi barakna hawla wa bi nuriyahu min ayatin al-nah wa al-sabiha basir. وأتينا موسى الكتاب وجعلناه هدى لبني إسرائيل ألا تتخذوا من دون وكيلة ذرية من حملنا مع نور إنه كان عبدا شكورا فإذا جاء وعد أولاهما بعثنا عليكم عبادا لنا كلي بأس بأس شديد فجاسوا خلال الديار وكان وعدا مفعولا ثم رددنا لكم الفرة عليهم وأمددناكم بأموال وبنين وجعلناكم أكثر من الكبر إن أحسنتم أحسنتم إلى في أنفسكم وإن أسأتم فلها فإذا جاء وعد الآخرة ليسوموا وجوهكم وليدخلوا المسجد كما دخلوه أول مرة وكان أمرا شديدا. Brothers and sisters, these few verses give a promise to every believer that one day this Jerusalem and Aqsa Mosque is going to be under the power of Islam. How long it took, I don't know. But the Quran speaks with that, and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a promise, the promise is a done deal. It's written before the creation of the heavens and earth. So rest assured that one day you might see it or not see it, and I believe we will see it, inshallah. That the Muslims will seize Jerusalem, and they, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, will be under the authority of the Muslims. Brothers and sisters in Islam, it is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa'adu Allahi la yaklik Allah wa'adahu wa lakin aqsar al-nafi la ya'lamu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surah al-Rum said this is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never break a promise but most of the people don't know ya'lamu na zahira min al-hayat al-dunya wa hum an al-akhirat min al-qafilun do you know the appearance of things? oh kids are being killed and women are being killed how many got killed? how many? 2,000 on the Muslim side, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000? You know what's worse than this? The massacre of the Muslim children, the Muslim generation by the social media and the public school. Wallahi, this is more painful, more depressing than what's happening to us. Brainwash of Muslims everywhere, kids who attend the public school. You know. I was talking to my niece yesterday. She's living somewhere in New York in a nice area. You know how much is the school taxes over there like per year? $18,000. Let alone the neural taxes. The total tax is $25,000 per year. Out of this, $19,000 is dedicated for the public schools. Teaching what? Brainwashing them. Teaching atheism. Teaching transgender. Teach him bad stuff that will cause him to be atheist. So, how in the world I put my child in an environment like that and I let him learn all that and I expect him to come to pray? How? This is a massacre. Wallahi, it's worse than the one in Gaza. It's a massacre of knowledge, massacre of the deen, massacre of the religion, massacre of manners, massacre of humanity. Because what's happening afterwards is facade. If there is no Islam, the facade is everywhere. Look at it around you. Zahra al fasadu fil barri wal bahri bima kasabat ayi nas. The facade of corruption appeared left, right, and left with what people did. It is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we attend. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the Quran, gave us the Quran in order to see what's the formula, how are we going to do that? Is it that we like 
all go and demonstrate like people who demonstrate, or go like try to go there and try to stick up for the innocent people or do whatever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave formula for everything. Everything was explained in an easy way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make difficulty in this religion. It's just as simple as what I'm going to say. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ألم ترى إلى الملأ من بني إسرائيل إسرائيل من بعد موسى إذ قالوا لنبي الله من بعث لنا ملكا نقاتل في سبيل الله قال هل عسل عسلتم إن كتب عليكم القتال ولا تقاتلوا قال وما لنا نقاتل في سبيل الله وقد أخرجنا من ديارنا وأبنائنا فلما كتب عليهم القتال تأولنا إلا قريبا منه والله عليه الصلاة There was in the children of Israel had like a prophet, and there are prophets of children in there a lot. And every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a prophet, he sends a king with the prophet. And if the king is following the prophet, they get victory. If the king does, doesn't follow the prophet, they fail. And this is what happens. They have a prophet, the king doesn't follow the prophet, and that caused <coughs> them to lose their land, Jerusalem, and it was seized by uh, the giants or the enemy. And, and they ask, see, I mean, when people don't want to fight, they make excuses. They don't want to fight. Nobody will fight. Nobody will, would like to fight or lose their life. They make excuses. Would you, we're going to fight. I mean, why, why not we're going to fight? We were taken away from our homes and our money were taken away. We're going to fight. But send us a leader. Because we're going to follow, follow the leader. And this is the tone nowadays in the Islamic world. Oh, we're waiting for him to leave. Send us a leader. Oh, if we have a leader, we're gonna we're gonna like follow him and we're gonna like do what he's supposed to do. It's just an excuse. It's just an excuse. Most of the time. Because when the prophet brought a leader, they turned away. وقال لهم نبيهم إن الله قد بعث لكم طالوت ملكا قالوا أن يكون له ملك علينا ولم يؤت ساعة من الملك and their prophet said that I Allah سبحانه وتعالى sent you Allah sent you I didn't bring it Allah sent you like a leader that will lead you to fight against the enemies and he looked at the leader and said, well, he's not rich, he's poor. How? We are, any one of us will provide leadership better than him. And then this is everlasting lasting statement that their prophet says, Allah gave him two things. Number one, knowledge. Number one, knowledge. What knowledge? The knowledge of the book. The knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The knowledge of the hikmah. The knowledge of to follow the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The knowledge of taqwa. The knowledge of to know the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And fil jism, and he's powerful in terms of physical ability. Anyway, to make the long story short, most, most of you probably know what the, the rest of the story. But the bottom line is that when they were presented, even those people who followed the leader and then went to fight, when they were presented to uh, Jalut, the, the army of their enemy, they couldn't fight. Why they couldn't fight? Because of desires. فَلَمَّا فَصَلَ طَالُوتَ بِالْجُنُودِ قَالَ إِنِّي إِنَّ اللَّهُ مُفْتَرِيْهُمْ بِنَهَرُ فَمَنْ شَعِرُ إِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمَنْ لَمْ يَطْعَمْهُ فَلَيْسَ مَنْ شَعِرُ إِنْهُ فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي وَمَنْ يَطْعَمْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي إِلَّا مَنْ اِخْتَرَفَ غُرْبَةً بِهِ and he presented them with a river. And he told them, whoever drink from that river is not going to come with me. This is a leader. He has the knowledge and has the wisdom. And whoever doesn't drink and will take one, maybe take only like one a sip from the, from the water, I'll take with him. What is this river? It is the river of shahawet. It is the river of desires. You know, every one of us following his desires. You see what's convenient for him, what's comfortable. For him. And 
Forget the most important thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives you this and gives you this and gives you this. And follow our desires. And following the desires will lead to a generation that's not strong, weak generation. They're not going to be able to do anything. They are like, the foam of the flood has no weight. How many millions in the whole globe Muslims came out and demonstrated and said, Oh, we're gonna destroy the enemy, we're gonna we're sticking up for that war. Zero. Nothing. Because everyone who goes home and stand it like stick to the TV, watch movies, enjoy himself. How many of them come for salah? How many of them establish salah? How many of them send their, their kids to learn Quran? How many of them wake up in the night and establish prayers? How many of them open the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and memorize an ayah? How many? How many? Few. Few. Well, like, because if they were all doing that, there shouldn't have happened. Whatever have, have, have happened to the Muslim shouldn't have. Brothers and sisters in Islam, it is the same scenario Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring back. Every time we leave our deen, every time we forget our book, every time we let the corruption in land go, we get penalized by being weaker and our enemy will give us severe punishment and will be humiliated. And Omar al-Khattab said it, and it's no secret, he said, نَحْنُ قَوْمٍ we are people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored us with Tawheed, with Islam. If you leave Islam and you go seek honor in other than Islam, you're going to be humiliated. And this is what's happening. And again, I'm, I'm blaming myself before anybody else. I'm just not saying that you and me, that's all the Muslims of all over the world. So what's the solution for this? As simple as this. I mean, you see that the nuclear power and all the powers around the world like sticking for uh, Israel in killing the children and the women of them. And probably if you go there, you're going to be destroyed. The solution is that we be good servants for it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَاً the first word, the first promise, I got servants for Allah, two servants for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They come for prayers. They stand together to make jama'ah prayers. They teach the kids Quran. They teach themselves Quran. They abide by the Quran. This is the Abad. Ulu Bas Shadid, the Bas is the king in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they have firm belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't make no mistakes at home, because we're going to bring the next year. When the Munafiq were like left behind, Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Muhammad set out for uh, jihad, the Munafiq said that we are going to, when we return to the Medina, we are the owners of Medina. 
Medina. And we were against them, me and Prophet Muhammad and his companions out of Medina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made an everlasting statement says, and for Allah is the honor of might and for his prophet and for the believers. But the hypocrites from these guys don't, don't know that. Man kana yurid al-'izza fa lillahi al-'izza jamia. Whoever would like the honor and might, it's all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lillahi yas'ad al-kalam al-tayyib wa al-'aql al-salih wa al-fa'il. The good word will go up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So say no words. Don't fear people. Say no words in saying the right thing. Even if the demonstration down in Atlantic City or Philadelphia will come out or the White House comes out and it's some people might say it's, it's bid'ah or sunnah, it's not from sunnah. At least somebody came out and say some good word. At least they utter some good word. And they pray together. And they give salah. See, there is a verse in Surah Al Hajj. People <coughs> misunderstand it very much. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I would be able to say, I would be able to say, I would be able to say, Allah What's the interpretation of this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the believers to spend their money in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever it is, path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are known. And do not cause destruction of yourself. Most of the people when they hear that, oh no, I shouldn't be like rush and jump in the middle of dangers, danger while I'm not prepared and uh, something might happen to me. Well, like, this is not the interpretation. It's not. The true interpretation is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> criticized the Ansar because after some of them, after the fat, after the conquerance of Mecca, and the booties were like kind of distributed for the trophy for the, or the trophies for in, in, in the following battle. They said, well, we spend a lot of money in staking up for the for the deen, and this is we didn't get much. Let's go back to Medina and stick to our businesses and make money. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This what you say is what's gonna destroy your money. Wallahi will destroy your money. To be like miser and to to be uh, like kind of stingy in the past of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what's gonna destroy you. Not that you pay it in the past of Allah subhanahu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Allah Allah Azmun was closer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't oppress even the path of Allah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, this week, and I would like you to listen to this, listen to this. Uh, my son came, and he just started his uh, work in this field. My son came back, and he was upset. I said, what's wrong? He said, the, the CEO of uh, Inspira, Ms. Amy Manuj, made a video clip, and she put it to the email to all medical staff, to all staff. That we are in support of Israel. We are in support of Israel. Now, Ms. Manuz, or whatever you name are you in support of Israel when they kill the children and you have children in the department to treat children? Are you in support of Israel when they bomb hospitals? Are you in support of, of, of uh, of Israel, when they kick people out of their house and destroy their homes? Are you in their support? And what, where are you coming from? Are you a head of a political organization? What does this have to do with policy? What is this? In support of Israel, this is a hospital. Has nothing to do with Israel and Palestine and Gaza. Has nothing to do with that. And if she doesn't have somebody stick up and say you are wrong, you either be fair and balanced or you leave your position, they're gonna keep attacking the Muslims. How many Muslim positions on that staff? 
How many Muslims stand on this hospital? Let alone how many of you of the Muslim community use this hospital? How many? Hundred? Thousand? And this is what we get. Why? Because nobody speak. Nobody talk. She can say whatever she says. There's no opponent. Is this fair? Inshallah, I'm going to write a letter to her. And I'm going to ask whoever would like to sign the letter, but there's no obligation. To sign the letter, and she should, the letter will say, Miss Manus, you're not represented us, you're not representing us in saying you are in support of Israel. You misrepresented us by saying that we are in support of Israel. You are biased, and you are unbalanced, and you are actually sticking up for the Zionist. You are. And when you say that, that will cause the, 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 the community of the hospital to be proprietary. There will be somebody who is Israel, somebody who is against Israel. What is this? Is this a hospital? What's this? Inshallah, inshallah, I'm going to write a letter and everyone who would like to sign, there is no obligation here. Every physician or staff, who would, I would like to invite you, if you don't listen to the video, you just listen to the video again. And then whoever would like to sign the letter with me, that's fine. Whoever doesn't, I'm going to submit this letter even if I'm going to be the only one who signs. And I'm going to teach you the lesson that she should be respecting the Muslims, and she should be respecting the people who, the families of victims, and she shouldn't be doing that. Everywhere you are, do not let anybody speak bad about this man. And teach your kids sunnah, teach your kids to make jama'ah, teach your kids that you are Americans like anybody else. Nobody can discriminate against you. You have the same right like everybody else. I thank the violent police for coming every prayer now in order to protect us. This is the way the country should be. You have the same right like everybody else. We're not different than anybody else. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy the Muslim enemies. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give victory to the people of Gaza. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make those who are killed in the past of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala among the martyrs. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save our children. Actually, the children who died or the victims are in Jannah. It's our children that, is be, that they are being massacred in the, in the public schools. Well, why I go to Muslim weddings, I see like Muslim girls wearing revealing dresses and no hijab and no, putting makeup. Like non complete night non Islamic practices. Well, I didn't wear, and I'm not ashamed of that. They didn't wear a ceremony to honor a Muslim physician in Inspira. And it was Madhari prayer, there were no prayers. From Madhari Persia. If I am a Muslim physician and I'm being honored, I will say we have to pray for Salah. That's why the disbelievers walking all over us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us together on the best of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy the enemy of the believers. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our shortcomings. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give mercy to all the dead Muslims. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give uh, uh, healing for all the sick Muslims. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us in the company of the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and with the companion of the company of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the highest place of Jannah. Allahumma salli wa sallam.